Okay, lines are off. Maiden voyage up to Georgetown. That's Peter, the owner. You feel good about it? Watch your cameras so you can see the corner of the, the dock now. Good. Yep, good. on camera so don't use that bounce thruster too much right <laughs> <laughs> Coast Guard's right next to us. We're hoping they're not going to be pulling this over and doing drills on us. Because at four knots, 4.7 knots, it's going to take us a while to get there. I think they're just doing man overboard drills. Did we get too close to that? Bunker barge. He's waiting to feel somebody. one of our anchors here in Charleston. Okay, so there's a green mark right back there. That's Breach Inlet right over there. And we had to come way over. You can see our next mark is right here. And we had to come way over to the port side and come around that mark and then come back over to this green one. So I was just explaining to them, you gotta be really careful in the intercoastal in regards to what you're looking at, and he was gonna go and keep, keep that green mark on his left-hand side, which would have made him run over the shoal. So you gotta watch your marks and, and know which side you're on, which side you need to go on, because that was keeping him off the shoal at Breach Inlet. And this is 117A, and this is coming up to the ILP connector, Isle Palms connector right here. We're gonna go underneath here. So this is a straight shot up here, but, like I said, you gotta be careful because there's a lot of shoals and the charts might not be right. In fact, they're wrong a lot of times. I was explaining to them sometimes, you're looking at the chart and it tells you that you're actually on land and we know we're not on land because we're floating and moving up and down the intercoastal in the center of the channel. So you can't rely 100% on your charts. You've got to pay attention to what's outside the boat as well as what's inside the boat and make sure that you can make an accurate decision in regards to what you should be doing because these buoys and these shoals change all the time. Okay, so I was just telling them, these two green lights that you see, one there and one there, that's the center span of the bridge and that's where we should be heading under. And we can use them as range markers. So if I'm coming up river and I only see one of those, then I know that I'm coming directly in line with the bridge. If they're offset a little bit like that, then I know that I'm one way or the other to that bridge. So if I bring them in line, it basically acts as a range marker. So that's how we use those lights. And then typically on either side, this side and on the other side, there'd be two red lights. And that indicates, well, the two red lights are actually right down, right down there, there, and on the other side. But a lot of times they've got them up here as well. So we've got our reds that flank the side that lets us know the sides of the entrance and then the green indicates the center of the span and where we should be going through. And that's how we line up a bridge at night. One way to reutilize a safety boat, just turn it into a house or your private little yacht. 
came off a ship. Oh, I love this part of the intercoastal. There's the Ravenel Bridge in the background. We're just passing IOP Marina back there around the corner. And we're heading up into the back marshes. Beautiful area up here, doing a time lapse for you. If you guys are following along, I'm at marker 113. The Atlantic Ocean is just on the other side there. This is all I have palms, and if you notice, yeah, we've got some current coming with us. We're running around eight knots. We'll make it there tonight. Love rolling up through here. So we've got a set of greens and then come up we'll have a, a set of reds up in there. Really beautiful marshland. That's why it's called the Low Country. The water's getting cleaner up in this area because we're not dealing with as much of the harbor and the silts and stuff like that that roll down through the Ashley, the Cooper, and the Wando River. This is a lot more cleaner up here. We've got more sand. We're not looking at as much fluff mud uh, as we normally do. So this is more sandy and therefore you're not gonna get as much silt and the water's gonna be cleaner. So just coming up is Dewey's and Capers, Bulls Bay and all up through here. Beautiful area. Check the time lapse. after two o'clock I think and that's the entrance into McClellanville and right back there is where you'd head out to the Atlantic Ocean the Atlantic Ocean is way out there so we got down to 0.3 feet that was fun felt a little squatting backed off on it we were going like eight knots we backed off and the boat came back up and we were able to go we didn't pick up any dirt or anything like mud or anything like that we didn't touch bottom but it just started squatting and it was going slower and slower and the actual uh, engine load went up because it was harder and harder for the boat to move forward you can tell now in the water that we have an outgoing tide so now we're fighting the tide as we head up over here another couple hours to go before we get to Georgetown. It is just beautiful out here. We are out uh, Santee River, and there's a sailboat that's anchored right up in there. I was just telling the owners that it's a pretty good spot to come up in there, and some pretty good anchorage in there. There he is right there, that catamaran. We have no service right now, and we're on the intercoastal waterway. We're just passing marker 24. No more dolphins, but it's beautiful. And this is why you live the trawler life. I mean, nice and calm and peaceful, slow. A little noisy back here because this is where the exhaust is, but 
once you're in the pilot house, I mean, you're running a single John Deere motor. It's quiet and peaceful, and you just kind of lumber along and enjoy yourself and look at the scenery and just relax. That's what this is all about. It's 3.30 right now. Sharon's making me my uh, espresso. Thank you, Sharon. Nice reed grass, trees, all kinds of beautiful stuff. Georgetown is way up that way. Did she go? No. Oh. Is that a smoke on the water? <laughs> There's a song called Smoke on the Water. Do you know who sings it? Fire in the Sky. Who sings it? Does anybody know? If you know, put it in the comments. Don't tell anybody if you know. <laughs> you can see all of this whisking through the trees. It smells good. They do natural burns to, to the brush. I don't know if that's what it is or not, but yeah. um, it could be it. It smells very tiny. Yeah. We are a couple hours out. Enterprise isn't answering the phone, no surprise there, so. Got to find another alternative route to get home. But did you think of the name of the song or the uh, band? No. Nope. Sharon will think about it. She remembers to tell me as soon as we get off. But beautiful ride up. Nice smoky day. Floating bridge up in Georgetown. So this big barge here swings over to that side. And that's how they get the cars across. Right, Teacup? Hmm? Teacup hasn't gone to the bathroom all day. Hmm. There it is. Fires up and just rolls from this side over to that side, right to there. I think that's a little ferry to get pedestrians across. Miss Ellie, is that what it is? Pretty interesting way of getting cars across, huh? Yeah. Instead of building a bridge, especially in the low area, right? Because otherwise you need a big bridge because you can't impede the passage of the intercoastal waterway. So this is the easy way to to make that resolution. And we're going to resume at safe speed. And we're going to come up into the main entrance into Georgetown and then head north into Georgetown. Georgetown.